we're going to jump in and do some rendering. So we're going to go into Filter and we're going to go back to Strata Design 3D. This time we're going to choose Render In and we're just going to check it and it'll take a second for this to launch once again. So we're going right back into the same application but as you can see this application has a lot of different uses. So here we are right now, we've got our 3D model and it's actually showing the picture behind it and this is great, this helps us to position things. Alright, what we're going to do is just click once, we've selected our vehicle and what we want to do is change our lighting direction. We want to set that light behind it so we're going to go over here to our environment and we're going to choose lights and we're going to grab our light and drag it and notice as we do that we get our new positioning of our lights. And so our primary light now is coming from behind and we want to increase the intensity of that. Maybe bring it forward a little bit. And that actually is looking more like an accurate light to match the model. Now we've run into a slight problem because notice that this side now is cast in shadow. So it's very dark. What we need to do is we need to put a little bit of a fill light in there just so we can see the detail. So what we're going to do is just go under the lighting and click add. And now we add another light and then we're just going to drag that light. We're going to use it as a fill light. So we're going to position that where it's casting the light where we want it. And we're going to drop the intensity of that way down. Because we just want it just enough so we can see our detail. We don't want it to overwhelm. And then you'll notice too, under the extra settings, if that's closed, just twirl it open and turn off cast shadows. Because we don't want to render any shadows on this light. We only want to render the shadows on the other light. Notice that the cast shadows are turned on. So now we can have a little peek and see what this is going to look like. You'll notice we've got a little camera here. This is our renderer. If we take that camera and we drag it, we can drag it over a portion of our vehicle and it will begin to create this nice test render for us. And I'm looking at this and this is looking pretty good. You can see our logos and stuff are looking pretty nice in there. We could manipulate those lighting a little bit more if we wanted and play around with them. But I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now what we want to do is create a full render. So right now we're just going to click once with this camera. And what it does is it creates a new window. This is the untitled snapshot. And what it's doing now is it's rendering out our whole model. You'll notice as it's rendering out now we've got our shadows, we've got our reflections, and notice we've got the reflection on the bottom. Yeah, sure, the reflection is a little bit intense, but we can fix that. And we're going to fix it in a moment inside Photoshop. So now we're happy with our render. We want to bring it back into Photoshop. We just click once again here, return to Photoshop send the image and we can send it and close and you'll notice something will happen all these layers have been built up and here it is there notice we'll go down here so you can see that our 3d layer has been turned off because it's no longer using our 3d layer it's actually rendered out all these different parts of the image on different layers so it gives us that total control and if we ever need to go back to the 3D model again, we can just turn it back on here by turning on the eye, and we can play around for it once again. So let's have a look. We'll turn off all these different settings here, and we're going to start with the diffuse. The diffuse is our basic render, and you can see there, there's our nice render of our shape. And it's kind of like a good kind of a shaping, shading looking here. We don't have any of our lights or reflections or shadows or anything like that, but it does give us our texture and our shape. So we're going to move up. We've got our ambient and diffuse shadows. We've got our ambient there. We've got our reflections on this layer. We've got our specular, which is like our highlights here. And then we've got our transmitted lights, which picks up the areas that are semi-transparent. So you can see now we've got this really nice looking render. And we need to do a little bit of work to it because obviously the reflections are too strong. The shadows are too strong. And it needs a, just a little bit of touching up. And we can do that right now because we have everything in separate layers. Something that's really good about this though versus just taking a Photoshop image and then dropping it upside down for a reflection, look at this, it's showing areas in there that are underneath that are not showing in the original picture. So these are true reflections, they're not just simulated reflections. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tone down this reflection a little bit. But if you notice that the reflection affects the whole vehicle, there's reflection on it as well as under it. 
well, we don't want to mess with the reflections on the vehicle right now. We just want to do the reflections underneath. So we want to protect it. So we could go down here. Notice we've got different masks that we can use for selections. And we could use some of these different masks. A uh, quick way that I find for doing it is just grabbing the diffuse because the diffuse defines the region of our model. So I just hold down the control key and that would be the command on Mac and just click once. And notice now we've got a selection over the whole area of the vehicle. All we need to do now is just inverse that selection and you could use command shift I or that would be control shift I on Windows or just go under select and then we can just use inverse. And now everything is selected except for our vehicle. So our vehicle is now protected and we're going to go back to our reflection and we're going to just blur it a little bit. Choose the Gaussian blur. And as you can see, we can blur the thing like crazy or just a little bit. Let's just add a little bit of blur there. Click OK. And now it's blurred. So it's a little, it's not quite so fake looking. But yeah, we also want to add a little bit of texture because it looks a little bit too smooth for what's going on here. So let's go under the filters and we're going to go under the distort and we're going to choose glass. Then when the glass filter comes up, you'll see the filter gallery will launch. And I'm actually using the frosted setting and I could drop the scaling down a little bit or we could, you know, really crank it up depending on how you want to make that texture look. Let's put it about there. That's pretty good. We can change the amount of distortion. Let's not make it too distorted. And we can change the smoothness, turn it down. We've got very, very distorted looking or we've got it very smooth. So let's just give it a little bit. So it has just a few little dimples and stuff like that. Maybe smoothen it out a little bit more. And we'll click OK. And notice now we've got this nice little textured reflection. I'm just going to turn off the selection there. But I notice that the reflection is a little strong inside the vehicle as well as on the ground. So I'm just going to drop the opacity down just a little bit on this reflection. Let's bring it down a little bit. looks a little better. And we're going to add a layer mask. And now we've got the layer mask on the reflection with black as our foreground. Let's grab a brush and we've got a nice soft brush. Let's drop the opacity down a little bit on our brush. And then we can just slowly paint this out just to control it a little bit. And as it gets further away, the reflection tends to be a little bit more faded. So we're just going to pay more attention to it further away. And we're just kind of toning down that reflection a little bit. There we go. And that's starting to look a little bit more realistic. Maybe get rid of it a little bit more. There we go. And we've got a much better reflection. It's not overwhelming anymore. The next thing we want to look at is the shadow. Notice we've got two shadows. We've got the diffuse and the ambient shadow. Let's start with the ambient shadow. Let's soften it off a little bit. Let's just grab our blur tool. And we're just going to soften that shadow. There we go. I could use the same technique we used for making the selection and hit the Gaussian blur. That would work just as well. But I want to give it a little bit more blur the further away from the object that it is. Because if you notice a shadow, it tends to blur as it gets further away from its source. And now we know we've got the other shadow, the diffuse shadow. We're going to pick that one up and we're just going to drop the opacity. We've got a couple of other things we could do here. In the specular, notice that if we turn that off, it shows some detail. Maybe it's blowing out a little bit of detail. Let's duplicate this specular. And what we're going to do is we're going to hide the copy of it. We're going to take the main one here and we're just going to drop the opacity down a little bit. Take it to zero and then just bring it up until we get just enough specular. There we go. And the specular highlights are those areas of that just really hit it. Those areas that just highlight the different areas on the vehicle. Maybe there is pretty good. And now we're going to go back to the copy of it and we're going to blur it. We're just going to grab that blur and it'll just give it a really nice kind of a feel to it. And we're going to drop it down a little bit. We don't want it too bright either. So we can drop that down a little bit. And then finally, there's a couple of layers at the top here that we're just going to turn on that were created earlier on. The first one is a noise layer, which makes it look like a little bit of rain falling and then a lens flare. So we've kind of got like a little sun shower there, which just gives that little bit of extra something to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy using Strata Design 3D.